Hello and welcome to Atheist Bible Study. I'm Joe Dixon. Uh, today we're going to read uh, Jesus, uh, Enemies Plot to Kill Him, and we got another story as well. We're going to read also uh, The Supper at Bethany. So we got two stories. Uh, before we begin, uh, we're going to begin to uh, have ourselves a nice adult beverage. Today's beverage is going to be uh, Young's Double Chocolate Stout. I don't know if you can see that there. Is that the delicious sign? So let me just drink this down, as always. For those who are new, what we do is we drink an adult beverage, and then we read the Bible, because the Bible is a very boring book, and you need something to just keep it interesting for you. Anyway, bottoms up. Ooh, make it messy. All right. Ah, take a moment you think, huh? Ah, there we go. All gone. Ah. Whew. All righty. Are we ready? Let's begin. Jesus' enemies plot to kill him. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees held a council and said, What are we to do? This man does many miracles. If we let him alone, all men will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our holy place and our nation. No one stops to think, you know, like, hey, wait a minute. We have Superman here. This is awesome. Maybe we should have him resurrect some of our family or, or maybe fly through the air. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't you let the kids like to join that? No, no. We don't want to care. We don't want to know about it. We don't want to know. All we care is that they may uh, somehow we'll lose our jobs in our holy place if uh, people follow Jesus. One of them named Caiaphas. How do you pronounce that? C-A-I-A-P-H-A-S. I have no idea how you pronounce it. Being the high priest that year, because every year they have a new high priest, there he is, Mr. Priesty, said to them, You know nothing and do not realize that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation should not perish. It's very important that we die for the people. This was not his own opinion, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also that he should gather together the children of God that were scattered abroad. So everybody, everybody, some people have never even met Jesus. People haven't even met Jesus. He's dying for them. Isn't that sweet? Jesus will come to your house. Hey, hey, I died for you. Hey, let me see what's in your refrigerator. What? What do you mean? You're not going to see what's in my refrigerator. Get out of here. No, no, you understand. I'm Jesus. I died for you. I died for your sins. What sins? I'm six. I don't care. I don't care if you're six. I died for your sins, God damn it. You let me in that refrigerator. Fuck you, Jesus. No, no, fuck you. I died for you, God damn it. Sorry, Dad. All right, that's, that's why the argument would happen, but we'll, we'll move on. I'm sorry. From that day forth, they planned together how to put him to death. Everybody got to kill that Jesus. Jesus, therefore, walked no longer among the Jews, but went into a country near the wilderness into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. Because, you know, you go in hiding when you're the son of God. When you have the power to resurrect people and part water and everything, you go into hiding. Now the supper at Bethany. Now the Jews' Passover was near at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Because you got to purify yourself to enjoy Passover. Because the Passover is the massacre of children, men, women. But you see what happens. People put like blood up on their walls or up on their front door so God will know to pass over their house to slaughter them and slaughter their neighbors instead. You really want to celebrate that. you got to be clean for that. you got to be purified for that. That's a... Passover is a beautiful story, ladies and gentlemen. Gotta be nice and clean. Gotta you gotta gotta do like uh, gotta shower. Gotta do like use some my like a uh, nice uh, uh, what am I looking for? Like Irish Spring. Make sure your pits don't stink. It's clean that crotch. All that good shit. There they looked for Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. What do you think? Do you believe that he will come to the feast? For both the chief priests. And the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he was, he would have, he should announce it that they might seize him. So they're really looking for that Jesus. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom he had raised from the dead, that they made him a supper and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with them. Would you think he would stink? Do you think all that time dead? Well, I guess he purified himself too. Maybe, maybe he doesn't. Maybe you know Lazarus uh, got a. When you've been dead for a cup for a while and uh, you clean yourself up, you don't stink anymore. I guess that's probably it. Mary took a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, which is always hot. And the whole house 
was filled with the odor of the ointment and probably of Jesus' feet. Can you imagine what woman does that? Woman like, oh, let me clean your feet. Oh, this is so wonderful. Oh, now let me lose my hair. Let me use my hair to clean your feet. I don't know. I guess in the Bible, women are like uh, this different alien species would do that. Because I, I, I personally, I don't know. Maybe you do, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe you know a woman who like, you know what? I clean my hair every day. I braid it and I do all this shit. Too. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna clean your feet with my hair. That, that's what I do with my hair. I go down to the, I go down to the beauty shop to get my hair done just so I can clean your feet. Mm -hmm. Who does that? Who cleans their feet? I don't know. I don't know. Who's there to clean their feet? I don't know. Uh, then uh, said one of the disciples, Judas Isaacar, Simon's son, who was to betray him, betray Jesus, why has not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but that he was a thief and had the money bag and would take what was put in it. Which is bullshit. I mean, it's still a legitimate question. Why are you... Wasting this ointment, we could sell that and give it to poor people or something, or even among ourselves. Why are we? Why are you using this someone's feet? This doesn't make any sense. Then Jesus said, "Let her alone. For the day of my bearing has she kept this. The poor you always have with you, but me you do not have always." Which is actually kind of bullshit because Jesus apparently, at least according to the uh, the religious people, is always with us, isn't he? Isn't he always with us? He he dies for three days and then we're never done with the motherfucker. So don't don't give me that shit, Jesus. You're always here as well. Many people knew that he was there, and it came not only for Jesus' sake, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Because he's, he's, uh, he's the original zombie, so of course they don't want to see that. That makes sense. But the chief priests consulted together in order that they might put Lazarus also to death. Which, he's already been dead, so I don't know why that's a threat to him. Because he was the cause of many of the Jews going away from them and believing in Jesus. So ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, Atheist Bible Study. Um... What we learned is that, uh, again, Jesus really has a thing about feet and having them ointed, uh, 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 appointed, anointed, whatever. Um, we also learned that if uh, a poor child is starving, it's not as important as Jesus' feet. Jesus' feet is far more important than anybody starving or hurting. Um, we learned that if you find uh, Jesus among you, what people will really do, they won't want to study him and figure out, maybe have him resurrect their family members. They'll want to kill him. Why, I don't know. Because they, they want to hold on to their nation, apparently killing them. But why? How, how that's going to hold on to the nation, I don't know. But there you go. Uh, all right, so that's Atheist Bible Study. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.